Alex Trinidad squares off with number two rated Mahenge Zulu for the IBF Welterweight Championship. Well, when a 20-year-old Felix Trinidad won the IBF welterweight crown from two-time world champ Maurice Blocker in 1993, he was proclaimed the future of boxing, destined for superstardom. While he has displayed exceptional ring skills, his recent opponents have been somewhat questionable. Now in his prime at 25, the man called Tito may be steering a bit off course. Nearly five years ago, an enthusiastic 20-year-old baby-faced sensation stepped into boxing spotlight for his first world championship fight. Trinidad looking to finish Blocker off. Oh, what a right hand by Trinidad! And down goes Blocker! With that second round knockout, Felix Trinidad was touted as boxing's next superstar and heralded as a future Hall of Famer. I'll keep fighting, keep defending my title until the opportunity arises where I can go up to 154 pounds. And I hope to be a three-time, four-time world champion. Over 16 months, he fulfilled all promises, impressively defending his title five times. We got a new rising superstar here in Trinidad. And perhaps a star is born. He earned a convincing win over the aging yet dangerous Hector Camacho scored a spectacular knockout of the then undefeated Yori Boy Compass and stopped the highly regarded challenger Obakar. I don't believe at this point I may lose. I'm fast. I take punches. I have everything to be a good champion. I have it all to be a champion. Since then, Trinidad's storybook career has lost its luster. Over the last three years, he has fought only seven times, all against mundane opposition. And whether it's been bad timing, boxing politics, or competing television networks, Trinidad has been unable to arrange a fight with one of boxing's superstars. I have fought many good fighters, a lot of fighters, and I still have to fight Pernell Whitaker, Ike Quarte, and Terry Norris. And right there, I will prove to a lot of people who say I'm not the best welterweight in the world that yes, yes, I am. Five years have passed since that fresh-faced 20-year-old won the IBF title. And now, as a fighter in the prime of his career, Felix Trinidad knows that time is of the essence if he is to fulfill his potential and earn his place in boxing history. As we bring you back to this frenzied coliseum in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Tremendous enthusiasm and fervor and nationalistic pride as they are getting ready to greet one of their favorite sons, their hometown hero, Felix Tito Trinidad. In just a couple of minutes, you see the, the flags of Puerto Rico proudly draped throughout this arena. A crowd of better than 12,000 standing room only. They've been waiting for this one for a long time. Here's Mahenge Zulu from Kinshasa Zaire, the scene, of course, of the rumble in the jungle. Ali versus Foreman, even at the age of eight. He watched that on television, and he told us he was inspired by one of the most compelling sporting events in history. He started boxing right after that, and he's going to come in here to this wild crowd chanting for Puerto Rico and for Felix Trinidad. This is an in, just an incredible scene here, Bertie. Yeah, the enthusiasm is so big because it's been a long time since they had a champion as great as Tito. And of course, they've had Wilfredo Gomez, Vasquez. You know, they've had great champions here. But recently, this young, fresh-faced kid came on the scene, exploded, took everybody out of his way. He's done nothing wrong. Meanwhile, his opponent tonight making his way toward the ring has yet to show his face to the crowd. Zulu has fought predominantly in Italy, where he now lives. Pro debut in 1990 after a nine-year amateur career. Listen to the crowd. Well, the reaction you'd expect. No recognizable names on his ledger. He's been inactive for 240 days. His last fight, August of 97. And he's going to have to fight not only Felix Trinidad, but this crowd. Here he is, 
Tito Trinidad, hoping someday to be mentioned in the same breath as other Puerto Rican standouts like Wilfredo Gomez and Wilfred Benitez. And is it just me or is he still got a baby face? He does, doesn't he? He looks just like the first day we had him on here. When he was an What's the day? Yep. That was back in 1993, about five years ago. What a career he's had. He, he captured the belt with a riveting second round knockout of Maurice Blocker. It is deafening. Put your mind of Barry McGuigan when he used to come in at Dublin. It was like this complete madness. You can't hear yourself think. We check the tail of the tape. The biggest disparity in age. The champion, 25, seven years younger than Zulu. Trinidad just an inch taller. Both tip the scales at 147. The limit. Trinidad plans to stay at 147 for a long time. He is closer to 160 tonight to its reach advantage for Trinidad. He rules no standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If the fight is stopped by an accidental headbutt before the end of the fourth, it's a no decision. After the end of round four, they go to the scorecard. So here at the noisy Ruben Rodriguez Coliseum in Bayamon, Puerto Rico, set for the main event, the IBF Welterweight Championship, Trinidad versus Zulu. We are set for the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Damas y caballeros, favor de ponerse de pie para escuchar la Borrenqueña. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of la Borrenqueña. Aquí está el sensacional Andy Montagné. La tierra de Borinque, donde he nacido yo, es un jardín florido de mágico primor, un cielo siempre nítido de sirve de Arrullo placido, las olas a sus pies, cuando a sus playas llegó Colón, exclamó lleno de admiración. Esta es la linda tierra.
box al Coliseo Rubén Rodríguez en Bayamón, Puerto Rico, por el campeonato peso welter de la Federación Internacional de Boxeo. Ladies and gentlemen, we do welcome you to our feature out of the evening. It's all brought to you by Don King Productions, Showtime, and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the President Robert Lee Sr., Supervisor Robert Lee Jr., along with the Puerto Rican Boxing Commission, the President Domis Delgado. Ahora presentando a los jueces, introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, Al DeVito, Luca Montella, and Waldemar Schmidt. Bien amigos, esta es la pelea principal de la noche. Fight fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world. Ahora, damas y caballeros, presente público y aficionados al box del todo el mundo. It's showtime! With the IBF welterweight championship of the world, 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing first our referee in charge, working in this his 18th world title bout. El referee es Luis Pavón Rivas. Presentando en la esquina azul, al retador, usando casucillo blanco con franja roja. Introducing first the challenger. On my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, and hailing from Kinshasa, Zahir. Tiene un peso de 147 libras. His weight, the welterweight limit, 147 pounds. Con un record de 17 victorias, dos derrotas y un empate. Tiene siete ganadas por knockout. His record stands at 17 wins, two losses, and one draw, with seven wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the number two contender by the IBF. Here is the IBF Intercontinental Welterweight Champion. Aquí está el retador, clasificado número dos peso welter, introducing the challenger, Mahengi Sulu. Su rival, el campeón en la esquina roja, con calzoncillo blanco. Introducing his opponent, needing no introduction to you, his fans, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with the colors of the Puerto Rican flag, y representando Cufe Alto, Puerto Rico. Pesando. 147 libras, his weight, the same as his opponent, 147 pounds. Tiene un sobresaliente record de 32 victorias, sin derrota, con 28 de ellos por knockout. His record includes an unblemished 32 wins, no losses, 28 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome one of boxing's pound for pound greats, the IBF welterweight champion of the world, Aquí tenemos el campeón del mundo, peso welter. Demos la bienvenida al sensacional e invicto Félix Tito Trinidad. Once again, our referee in charge now to give instructions. El referee is Luis Pavón Rivas. Hey, okay. Okay, ustedes son dos profesionales. No quiero golpe de la cintura para abajo. Cuando yo intervenga, no quiero que nadie tire. Vamos a la pared y que hagan mejor. You are a professional. Don't want a low punch. When I say break, stay back and don't punch. When I interfere, nobody punches. They have a clean match, okay? Good luck. We preface every Trinidad fight by saying, yes, he's a great one, but he's been knocked down four times. Coincidentally, all four times in the second round, although he's come back to knock out all of those opponents. And Mahenge Zulu 
Being an African-born fighter working in Italy, has, it has been a problem. He's had trouble getting fights. Here we go, round one, scheduled for 12. Trinidad says this will end in a knockout, and it won't go past five rounds. We'll see. Zulu's strategy is to move and box. You can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trinidad. Conditioning and endurance are major Mahenge Zulu qualities, but that could be academic for the man named Tito. He recognized the fact that Tito's a great puncher, and he said he can withstand early rounds, two and three, and the barrage and all of the hoopla in the fight crowd. He said there will be a new champion. Well, to get by three rounds of Trinidad when he's on is a feat in itself sometimes. And then comes four, five, and six when Trinidad's really trying. <laughs> that is the bad time. Now, these first rounds aren't bad because he doesn't look, look at him. He's just kind of measuring the guy, boxing. He's not out there for a quick knockout. It's round one and two is when he gets caught usually with a punch because he just miles him away. Then he starts off at three, four, and five. They're almost even in height, as you can see. How about they reach? They each came in at 147. As far as the reach, Trinidad is 70 and Zulu is 68. So a two-inch reach advantage, Trinidad. And the reason for that is a rule I'm going to give to the boxing public in a minute. Bobby Chez's golden rule, which I didn't know in 40 years of fighting. A fighter has the same reach as his height. Very close, very, very, very close. It's to very close. Your height and your reach are almost exactly the same most time. Provided say. you're born proportionately. <laughs> Zulu says he's never been down, cut, or staggered. Some feel he may experience one, two, or all three of those things tonight. Well, he certainly picked the right opponent to take a try. But Trinidad looks like he's going to enjoy the evening before he starts to fight because he's doing nothing. Zulu does take a good punch, according to Trinidad. If this was anybody but Trinidad, this crowd would be whistling and cheering right now for it to get started. They're so respectful of him. Trinidad always seems to start very slow, notoriously slow starter. Gives a lot of respect when he fought Kevin Lucy in first round. He maybe threw a dozen punches. Second round, he knocked him out. So you can't go by his inactivity in the first round. That is a Trinidad trait. He just seems to get the range. He's fast. He's accurate. He is a pinpoint puncher, and he is smart. Devilishly smart in the ring. So focused and smooth. But he is a slow starter, but he's starting to pick it up. He got hit with a pretty decent right hand, uh, tail end of a Zulu right hand, not real clean, but clean enough to get Trinidad's attention. It wasn't clean, but it was hard, and it was whistling right through there. Zulu has an awkward style, a strange style, as the bell sounds very hard to hear. a general thought is he's scared of you take him out of there and get, get started. Are they saying that to give Felix confidence or do they actually see that? I, I, they see the guy is scared and he's tentative, meaning, you know. You can see he's a little herky-jerky, yeah. a little tight and jumpy, which indicates very tense. As long as he's that way, take him now before he gets a little confident and gets into the fight. Round two. And this is the round that Trinidad has gone down four times in his career. For Zulu, he needs to close the gap. Trinidad has a little reach, a little bit of height, but he has beautiful punches from long range. Devastating right hands and hooks. Zulu needs to get inside that compromise and maybe work Trinidad's body a little bit and take a shot at him early because he always starts so slow. He's got a fast right hand at Zulu. It didn't land very well, but it did land a little bit. It was fast and it's hard. Trinidad's favorite combination is a, a double left hook, a, a hook to the body, followed by a hook to the head. And he throws it well. He dips in nice, turns his body, bends his legs, and he digs up underneath. 
He comes up top. He's very effective. He may be a slow starter, but he's a great finisher. He's a fast finisher. Well, it's a Julio Cesar Chavez special. Chavez perfected that, and that's what this guy did. But Trinidad does not have a great chin. Well, to me, a guy has a great chin when he goes down and gets up and fights like hell and wins the fight, as far as chin's concerned. That's a great resilience, I think. Yeah. You know, the chin may be suspect but, in some areas. Excuse me, Bobby, but a, a pretty left hook there that landed by Zulu. But he's winging. He's very wide. He's, he's a little more on punching than he should be, but he's punching. He's reaching too much. He, he reaches out like that. The uppercut's going to nail it. He may, if he was scared of the first round, he's not of the second, Zulu. I think he's doing very well from sure. He doesn't seem to be overwhelmed by the moment here in front of the backyard of Trinidad. Trinidad working a nice double jab in the right hand. He's starting to find the range and looking to measure Zulu now. Good defense here by Zulu, able to avoid those left hands. Uh, Zulu nice can't win the fight from out there, Steve. That's not going to be his fight. Look, look at the pretty motion. Look at the pretty motion of uh, Trinidad. He jabs, he moves a little bit. He jabs, he moves a little bit over. He jabs, he moves. He doesn't stay there. He goes a little bit over. He goes a little bit over. He goes a little bit over. And getting that right hand in range. And when he's in range, that's going to drop with devastating effect. Zulu, a, a kid who started out inauspiciously 4-2 and two out of the blocks as a fighter. He's now 17-2-1 with only seven knockouts. And he finds himself here in a title shot against... One of the top all-around fighters in the uh, world. This straight left hand there by Zulu that that sent uh, the head of Trinidad back. I'll tell you what, right now Trinidad seems to be showing a little more respect than even I thought he would show early on. Worrying about Zulu's punches quite a bit. Zulu throwing more of them. And Zulu's trying to end it with one punch. That could be a mistake. Because Trinidad knows how to counter beautifully. The bell. Zulu couldn't hear it. You didn't put it in. Mira, you did not put it in. I didn't put it in. You have it. You. No, you didn't. Mira aquí. Cuando tira la jab, tira la derecha. Okay? When he throws the jab, you go with the right hand. Okay. okay. This is always the right hand when the jab comes. Cuando jabea, te moviste. Te moviste. Move your head when he jabs. Aquí y derecha. Aquí, mira. Aquí, derecha. Cuando cae, aquí, derecha. See, he's throwing, he's throw the right hand on either side. They're excited that he, that they see he can hit Trinidad with the right hand over that lazy jab. The African-born Zulu who fights out of Italy, speaks four languages, obviously one of them is Spanish. Hector Perez in the corner there, he doesn't speak English. Neither does Trinidad. Round three. Let's see if he continues, Zulu, to throw that right. That did land. It's nice to see a fighter look so slick and pretty as Trinidad does when he fights. He's uh, very, very organized. He's very pretty to watch. He's made 11 successful defenses of the oh, title. Straight right hand. Beautiful yeah. right hand by Trinidad. Here's what we're talking about. Trinidad takes his time, finds the distance, finds the range. And when he starts connecting with frequency with that stuff, it's good night, lights out. That, that's, that's the purpose of jabbing and moving around. The, the right hand comes in. Now left hooks, followed by rights by Trinidad, and the crowd goes wild. Big round for Trinidad. Another left hook by Felix. Pushing Zulu back. See, Trinidad, when he gets his range, he finds his timing and range. He puts them together. He's very accurate, and he's very, a very good puncher. He's crisp, he's sharp, he's quick. He'll counter. Hard to keep him off. As soon as he knows he can hurt Zulu, he'll put him away. But the game Zulu hangs tough. Yeah, jab movement. Jab movement. Then the right hand. Man, that's hard to beat. So 
economical with his punches. He doesn't waste punches. He doesn't throw too many feel-out punches, range finders. He finds his range when he's ready, and then he lets him go and he makes him count. And as impressive as he is offensively, he's so elusive defensively. He blocked that left hook by Zulu. Zulu comes in wide again, telegraphs. Zulu, the number two contender, the mandatory challenger for this title. There's a lot of blood coming out of the mouth of Zulu. Zulu's bleeding all over his trunks, coming out of his mouth quite a bit now. Well, he's taking a beating here in this third round and showing the effects from the mouth. And there you see Trinidad doing his traditional, makes a one, two, three up top, step down and hook to the body. Beautiful. We approach the final 10 seconds of round three, a big one for the champion. Landing repeatedly on the head of Zulu. in the round as Tito starts backing up right at the very beginning of that round and he, he makes it known this is a round where things get serious. Everything he throws has got serious effect and it's beginning to destroy the mouth of Zulu. You see Trinidad once he gets in range he first starts to find his timing he will push the fight and take control. He gets in that zone and his punches all count Couple of the hooks weren't so clean, but he started to work that hook and work that hook, get some right hands, mix it up. He did a great job in that round. And we begin round four, Trinidad off a terrific third round. Studies his opponent's previous fights, memorizing their habits and patterns. And then when he fights them, it's as if he has boxed them before. He's a very ring savvy guy. He's got good fights ahead of him. They can get through the politics and make them, but we should see some beautiful fights in the next three or four years. He obsesses for Oscar De La Hoya, the WBC welterweight champion. You never know when that can be made, but when there's that much money involved, it can be made. Right now, they are just both posturing. Well, you have two different networks that have cash cows. Nobody wants to sacrifice the possibility uh, should, of a superstar coming down King, one notch. They should go to King Solomon's book. They each have one fight. One network has one, the other guy has a rematch. And then quick going. Let's get back to this one. Double left hooks by Trinidad. That land. That had to hurt. Trinidad has what we call a very educated left hand. To throw double left hook, body and head, reverse it head and body, keep the double up top or double down below, mix in jabs and uppercuts. Very, very educated left hand. And there it was again. The left hook right off the top of the head of Zulu. A wild swing and a miss by Zulu and a countering left by Trinidad. Zulu comes back with a straight right, but it doesn't bother the champion. The crowd erupts as Trinidad comes forward. You have a left hook that body, Steve. Zulu is in trouble. Zulu lost his balance, but staggered from those punches. Good body shot mixed in there, hurt Zulu, and Trinidad oh, oh, knew it, oh, oh, oh. but he couldn't close in for the kill. But that was the first one of the ones we spoke of. Left hook to the side, left hook up above. And there it is again, and that one kills him. Riveting shot to the ribs by Trinidad. A That's minute a to go in the fourth. That's a paralyzing blow to the side. Left uppercut to the body by Trinidad. He's showing his entire repertoire now. He's throwing that left hook to the body beautifully. He's working off the right hand up top. There's a left hook. That one stunned him, and down goes Zulu. Flat on his back. That's it. Forget That's about it. it. Forget about it. He ain't getting up. That's the end of that. That boy could punch, Steve. <laughs> this place is going crazy. The fans are going berserk. 
They're showering everybody here at ringside with water and beer and sodas Liquid. flying everywhere. And a large Puerto Rican flag being unfurled in the ring in tribute to their guy, Trinidad. But more important now, let's keep an eye on Mahenge Zulu and hope that he's all right. He's still flat on his back. He did have his eyes open. But this uh, sellout crowd, SRO crowd of better than 12,000 just exploded. Solid punch. The big concern is for Zulu. Still down. Zulu's talking. Fireworks, something just went off. I don't know what that was. Let's hope nobody gets hurt. I hope that isn't the ring collapsing. My goodness. I'll tell you what, I couldn't tell what it was. Look, very very flimsy right collapsed. now, Bobby. Very flimsy, the ring. I think a piece of the board collapsed underneath the ring. I can feel it shaking, vibrations. Unless somebody put a fireworks under the, under the ring. Right here in front of us, it, it, it looks very, yeah. very clumsy. Yeah. If you look, it's, yeah, it's... Uh, indentation. Is there an indentation there? It's to the right side of the ring. You can see that Budweiser sign, and it's a little above that. Yeah, it's all, it's all just caving in over on that side. Well, all of them should watch out, because if all that weight gets back on there, they're going to go right through that. And uh, somebody got, oh, look out! The ring, the ring is, is caving in. The ring is collapsing on the left side. And the everybody should the get left out. Side, and the tables have gone down with it, Steve. Oh, my goodness. Every, there's a big hole right in the middle of the ring. Everybody should get out. Jimmy, a gaping hole. Get out. Zulu's up. Zulu's up. But a lot of people are uh, in a very, very awkward uh, situation there on the left side of the ring. Yeah, the entire ring has collapsed here, Steve. You can see it. it's a couple of feet below where the ring should be. I've never seen anything like this. Look at this sight. Right on the outside. Fortunately, this is the last fight because this ring is shot. Yeah, but get outside so you can jump out. Poor well, Jimmy Lennon's giving on the inside. To Jimmy Lennon Jr. To, for, for his safety. Then he says, I'm okay. There's a big hole there in right. the ring. I've, I've never seen a fight, a, a ring collapse in all my years of being in there. Unbelievable never. sight. I mean, that big crack that we heard was what... What haven't we seen yet? What haven't we seen yet? Unbelievable. Something new every fight. All right, let's take a look at, at the replay. There's the hook that got him in trouble. Now watch the hook that finishes him off. That's it, the left hook, and it's so hard that he goes down completely. His head hits the canvas with a resounding whack, and he is out. Here you see it again. A nice, cute counter left hook on the way in. Trinidad goes back, sets up a nice short left hook, and Zulu runs right into right there, bang. He gets all balanced, and here's a little groggy. And he comes in and walks right into a clean left hook, and he's out. His legs are out from under him, and he's unconscious. Almost. And now, uh, as we take a look again, the authorities are in the ring now, making sure everything's okay. There's one more look at that left hand, and watch this. That's the coup de grace. Well, they should they should uh, uh, make this crowd leave abandon the Abandon the ring. They There's should no abandon reason. the ring. They really should. It's very dangerous. All right, Felix Trinidad is standing by. He's on one side of the rope. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Steve. The ring has totally collapsed here in the middle. Let's get uh, Johnny Rowland in here. Felix, first of all, tell us about that left hook there. ¿Cómo te sientes como de esa izquierda? ¿Cómo se vio esa izquierda? No, bueno, yo pego muy duro con esa mano y gracias a Dios, otro tiempo para mí. I hit very hard with that hand, and thank God everything worked out for me. The layoff, you were off for 219 days. You've only fought seven times in three years. Does it take you a while to get going? Were you concerned about your rust? No he peleado en 219 días. ¿Cómo te sientes? Me siento bien, yo le dije, me entreno duro, y ahí ustedes vieron. I trained very hard, you guys seen me. What next for you? Oscar De La Hoya, is that in your plans? What will you do now? ¿Qué es lo que te espera ahora, Oscar De La Hoya? Bueno, sinceramente, he, he hablado mucho de Oscar. Que, que venga allá y hacemos la pelea. He says, I've talked enough about Oscar De La Hoya. Let him come on. All right, congratulations to you, Felix. Okay, muchas gracias. Quiero enviar un saludo a Miguel Ojeda, el abogado. Muchos saludos a él. He's saying he wants to send regards to Miguel Ojeda and his family and his lawyer. One, one second. Y a mi tía en New York. My aunt in New York. Alba okay. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you next fight, Felix. Un beso bien grande, Alba Lidia. Back down to you, Steve. All right, Jim, when was the last time in a fight you saw the post-fight interview come before the official announcement by the ring announcer? It was such bedlam in that ring, the ring collapsing, that 
uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr. was unable to uh, make it into the clear to uh, do the announcement. There's Jimmy now up against the ropes, just looking for any area where he can stand. Now let's go to Jimmy for the official word. Damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, tenemos el tiempo, dos minutos, 20 segundos en round número cuatro, with a time, two minutes, 20 seconds of round number four. El referee paró la pelea, the winner by way of knockout, and still champion, Felix Tito Trinidad. And the crowd salutes Felix Trinidad. Trinidad playing to the crowd. There is a gaping hole in the ring. Unbelievable. What a scene here. Wild here at the Ruben Rodriguez Coliseum in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Steve Albert back ringside along with the fight doctor. Have you ever seen anything like this? I've never seen a ring collapse, never. I mean, I've been around a, a way in the collapse in the Ali fight in Munich, but never a ring. And I'll tell you what's even, even more stupid. When something like this happens and the capacity for injury is great, why doesn't everybody get out of the ring? Instead, they bring more police in more people in and the and the ring collapsed even further i don't understand this and what sounded like uh, an explosion or, or fireworks was actually the raft the underneath of the ring going it down. was the rafter cracking and you could see it happening well it, it's a good thing it didn't happen during it happens because of these enormous crowds that we now draw in the middle of a ring they got to stop this they got to stop this well there's and the ring right there look at that you can't even see how deep that is and if you were sitting here it's just there's a peak well, Felix Trinidad, as Jim Gray alluded to, only two fights in the last 17 and a half months, and he didn't show much ring rush uh, tonight. Well, I, on my card, I had it drawn up. I was going to take score for four rounds, and it wasn't going to last longer than it happened in four. You could see Felix is so good. He measures, he's ready, pulls the trigger, and he's through. He's one of the finest fighters fighting today, along with Finito, uh, along with Lopez, Ricardo Lopez. He's one of the finest technicians fighting. I just love to see this guy fight, along with Ricardo Lopez. He may have a tougher time trying to uh, negotiate his way through this uh, crowd here on the way to the uh, dressing room. Sometimes love hurts you a lot more than the other. Unbelievable. So now, as we mentioned before, he and Oscar De La Hoya are posturing for a, a big showdown, and uh, you just have to wonder if that fight is ever going to materialize. Oh, I think it will. Hopefully Both it will. men do. I, I, I remember back with Tommy Hearns and... and, uh, and um, Sugar Ray, I mean, they, they were in separate camps this and I, I mean, it just happens. Sooner or later, both people get together and say, it's just too much money here to be stupid about this. Let's sit down and figure out how we're going to do it. And money will tell. I mean, money will tell. That's a fight we all must see. That's a fight America must see. That's Ali Frazier. That's Sugar Ray with uh, the Hearns. You gotta, you gotta have that fight, folks. Quit fooling around. As we turn back over to our other partner here, Bobby Chez, it's interesting because uh, the Trinidad people uh, contend that that Oscar De La Hoya can't take a left hook. What do you think about that? Well, Trinidad has shown that he goes down, and so has De La Hoya. He's been down a few times. I think he likes to avoid some of the punchers. Guys like Costaju, Felix Trinidad, Obacar, uh, excuse me, Obacar, Ike Corte. Those are guys that have been talked about, but never really gotten to the table, and you, and you can't but wonder why. Now, there are different networks involved, different promoters involved, but I know these fights can be made. And like Freddie said earlier, one fight on one network, one fight on another, quid pro quo. Meanwhile, uh, I didn't know you spoke uh, another <laughs> language. Uh, meanwhile, both are saying, both Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Trinidad are saying, hold me back, hold me back. You know, my personal beliefs are irrelevant as far as to who wins. It's a fight I'd love to see. It's a fight I'd pay $1,000 to sit ringside and watch as long as I didn't have to work. Why don't you just give me the money and watch it on television? Not the same. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the uh, highlights of the big main event here in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. And the first fight between Frankie Lyles and Andre Shkalikov. Yeah, a, a rough, tough affair. A linebacker uh, fighting it out with a, with a very fine dancing. And he, and he gave uh, a good performance, but it was not an exciting fight. A lot of roughhouse tactics in that one. And uh, it was won by Lyles. And here's the main event. And this is just a technician at work doing what he does. His hand playing his play, systematically, head and body in unison. Just a tremendous fighter with a tremendous amount of ability and a great future ahead of him. 
So Trinidad with a fourth round knockout, 2.20 was the time and Lyles by unanimous decision. And don't forget, more championship action coming your way in May and June in four weeks. We go to Lyon, France, WBA Cruiserweight Championship. French champ Fabrice Tiozo defends against Terry Ray of Indiana. You can see it via satellite on Showtime Saturday, May 2nd at 10 Eastern and Pacific. Then in June, King Vision and SCT Pay-Per-View presents the IBF WBA Heavyweight Championship. Evander Holyfield will climb back into the ring for the first time in almost seven months to put both of his titles on the line against the former WBO Heavyweight Champ, the six foot seven Henry Akinwande. These two heavyweights will headline a championship card televised live on pay-per-view on Saturday, June 6th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific from the Mecca of Boxing, Madison Square Garden in New York City. That'll do it for another edition of Showtime Championship Boxing. It was a wild night. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again May 2nd from France for the Fight Doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Bobby Chez, Jim Gray, and our entire crew, Steve Albert, saying so long from Bayamon, Puerto Rico.